What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, I want to go through two misconceptions that I see that are going to apply to Newton's third law. And the first one that I see over and over again, I get asked about it's in textbooks, it's been on the AP exam, is, is the force of gravity from a book on a table and the force of a normal that applies to the book from the table, an action-reaction force pair as applies to Newton's third law. The second one that I want to talk about is if every action has an equal and opposite reaction, as they say, shouldn't that mean that we shouldn't be able to move? Like, shouldn't those forces cancel each other out? And I want to talk about both of those in this video. Very simply, and this is not very complex, but when you take a basic physics course, you are going to label the forces that are going to be on this book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a free body diagram from the book. And this is really shows the importance of a free body diagram. So right here, if this is the book, what are the forces acting on this book? Well, a force is something that's going to change the state of motion or attempt to change the state of motion of an object. So we know that there is going to be some weight of the book, some FG that points downward. Now, when this book comes downward and hits the table, the table is going to push up with a force that we call the normal force. Now, the misconception is is this an action-reaction force pair? Well, if this book is at rest, we know that from Newton's first law, we know that the force of the normal is going to be equal to Fg. But that does not mean that they are an action-reaction pair. In fact, these two forces are not action-reaction force pairs. And there's going to be two ways that I can really explain this to you. The first is very simple by looking at the definition of Newton's third. I have a really in-depth video about Newton's third that's going to go into it, but in that video I talk about how I hate the definition of every action has an opposite and equal reaction. You can watch that video if you want to see really why I hate the wording of that. So I tend to not use the words when I list Newton's third law. I say that there is a force vector of one object on a second object that must be equal to the opposite force vector of two onto one. Now there's something that needs to be seen here which is going to prove that this is not an action-reaction pair. First and foremost, for Newton's third law to apply, you need two objects, right? We need object one applying a force onto object two. In this case, the force of the normal is acting on the book. And the force due to gravity is also acting on the book. So there is only one object. These are not action-reaction pairs because these two forces act on only one object. And guys, that might make things a little bit more confusing than they need to be. But what you need to understand is that an action-reaction force pair, first and foremost, needs to have two objects. Now, generally, when we have an action-reaction pair, they're both going to be the same exact type of force. They'll both be a pull. They'll both be a push. They'll both be from gravity. Okay. This is a force due to gravity. This is a reaction to the book hitting the table. It's not technically a reaction to gravity. It is a result of gravity coming down and actually deforming the table a little bit. And then the force of the normal is really restoring force. And like I said, I don't want to get ahead of myself too much. But there are two forces that act on the book, gravity and the force of the normal. There are actually three forces that act on the table. We have the weight of the table, Fg. We have the normal force from the Earth, Fn. But also, we have a force that the book applies, F12, onto the book, and then there is a force, 2, 1, that acts. And those two are an action-reaction pair, but they are not equal to Fg. And like I said, that's way more than in depth than I really need to go. But the simple answer, Fn and Fg are not an action-reaction pair because they act on only one object where an action-reaction pair needs two objects, a pair of objects, object 1 and object 2. And the next misconception I want to talk about is, like I said, if... There's an action-reaction force pair, and they're equal and opposite. Shouldn't we not be able to move? And the, the real reason behind that is we can't forget about all of Newton's other laws. And it really has to deal with mass. And here's what I mean. Here's me. I say have a mass of 60 kilograms. 
Okay. Now this is the dock and the dock has say a mass of a thousand kilograms. Okay. Now what allows me to jump from here to here? Well, yes, friction, but let's not get too in depth. What we are going to see is that me, I am going to push on this deck. That is my action force. Now, Newton's third law says that because I push on the deck, the deck is going to then push on me with an equal and opposite reaction force. But if we gave that force a number, let's say that force happened to be one Newton of force, well, we'd see that I'm not able to really accelerate this deck. If we look at Newton's second law, and if I apply a one Newton force to a 1,000 kilogram object, the acceleration of that object is going to be next to nothing. Where if I take the Newton's law over here, and I say a one Newton force is equal to a 60 times A, we can see that this A is going to be a lot Bigger. What you need to understand is that these action-reaction pairs, they don't cancel. All right, everyone wants to say that the F net of these is equal to zero newtons. That is not the case because to cancel a force, you cancel a force on one object, right? When I want a block not to move on a table, I push down here and I push down here. These are a cancellation of forces, right? And they're not an action-reaction pair. You can only cancel forces on one object. So the reason that we move and the reason that we can have the same force is because of this mass aspect. This can still be one Newton and this can still be one Newton, but you guys know I'm going to move and this is going to move this way. And that happens in all of motion. That's kind of how we move. So like I said, guys, I hope that helped. If it did, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you have any other questions, about this, just remember, if you are trying to identify an action-reaction force pair due to Newton's third law, there needs to be two different forces acting on two different objects. And those forces do not cancel out because they have to apply to Newton's second law. And because to cancel a force, the forces need to be acting on one object. Until I see you next one, guys, stay positive. Keep working really, really hard. Always be, be kind to other people. I'll catch you on the next one.